Hi and welcome to our World of Words reading recommendations. Today I'm going to be recommending books on writing. So as you may already know, I am an aspiring author, so I have been writing since I was, well I've been writing since before, but I decided to be an author when I was about 11 and recently in the last like, I don't know, bunch of years, <laughs> I have started to read everything I can on writing because I just want to improve my skills and just why not get better? You know, it's always good to improve on yourself. So I'm going to show you some of the books that I have found most helpful for my own writing and hopefully they will help you as well. First one is I think my favorite one and this is Writing the Paranormal Novel by Stephen Harper. Now I just first want to point out that the title of this is a little bit misleading. It says Writing the Paranormal Novel but it's actually for writing anything fantasy. Not only is it an incredible guide to help you write a fantasy novel from start to finish, but it is also just a fun read. It's written in this really hilarious writing style and it just, it's so much fun. But it's also incredibly detailed for world building. It goes into every aspect of creating your fantasy or paranormal world, including tips on what to think about when creating the culture or the government of your fantasy world or your fantasy species. High fantasy, urban fantasy, paranormal, obviously, this book covers it all. <laughs> it even includes checklists and profiles to keep yourself on track. It is so incredibly helpful and even if you're not a writer, if you read a lot of fantasy, you'd probably really enjoy reading this book. The rest of these books do not have to do with a specific genre, so if you don't write fantasy specifically, you'll probably be more interested in the rest of these books. I personally struggle the most with writing descriptions. I feel like I have improved quite a lot and that is partly due to just practicing and paying attention to descriptions by authors that I admire. It is also partly thanks to the tips in this next book. Description and Setting by Ron Rosel. I think it's Rosel however you say R-O-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. This book has some tips that just blew my mind and helped me so much with description. This book is so well written. I've read other books on writing descriptions or how to improve description and I would get kind of bored with them because even when reading just a regular fiction novel, description is really what I'm least interested in seeing in the world. But this book changed the way I think about and the way that I approach Approach describing things. And though I do still find description a million times harder than say dialogue or coming up with plot ideas, this book helped me see how describing things can actually be fun because you get to play around with your word choice, find the words that essentially evoke the emotions that you want your readers to feel while they're reading a given scene. <laughs> the book also has exercises at the end of each chapter just to help you practice all of these different aspects of description and setting, obviously, since the setting is in there too. <laughs> the next book I recommend is another in that same series, Write Great Fiction, but this one is Characters, Emotion, and Viewpoint by Nancy Cress. Now, I've always felt like I was pretty good at creating characters and I didn't think I exactly needed to study viewpoint when I first got this out of the library many years ago. I primarily wanted to learn about emotion and how to make my scenes more emotional. But this book was so helpful. When I look for writing craft books, I generally gravitate towards the ones focusing on the things that I struggle with, but reading this showed me that it's also a good idea to see if you can make your strengths stronger in addition to just focusing on improving your weaknesses. So this book is about crafting characters, making viewpoints more dynamic, and bringing more emotion into your scenes. It goes into how to introduce characters and different ways to approach that. It also goes into things to consider when choosing a viewpoint. It is great for developing characters and there are even some character profiles to help get you started. I am all about character profiles. I could probably do a whole video 
just on that subject. So if you want to improve on any of these three topics, I definitely recommend this book. These are all the books I own on just like a specific topic. I have read a ton more from my library, but I won't go into those right now because I don't remember all the specific titles and all of the authors. But the next book I have to recommend is The Negative Trait Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman and Becca Puglisi, I think is how you pronounce that name. This book is so much more in-depth and fascinating than it sounds. You probably think that you could just go online and, and look up a list of negative traits and get the same results, but you can't. This book also has a sibling or sequel or something called the Positive Traits Thesaurus. I do not own that one, but I really do want to get it sometime. But I bought this one first because I have a harder time coming up with negative traits for my characters than I do coming up for positive ones, especially when it comes to coming up with negative traits for your main characters that are essentially good characters but you want to give them some flaws because as Hannah Montana says nobody's perfect we just gotta work it again and again till we get it right so <laughs> this is very helpful for that and it also is very helpful for if you're going to create a villainous character a fun thing about this book is that it also lists positive things that can come out of a negative trait. I'm going to explain that by simply just going into detail about one trait that it mentioned. Okay, here, I flipped to, let's say, indecisive. I'm just going to tell you pretty much everything that is in this one category so you can kind of get an idea about what this book actually is and how you use it. The definition is prone to wavering between courses of action. Possible causes of this trait, like what made them this way, essentially. These are not all the reasons, obviously, but it is a really good jumping off point for when you're thinking of giving a character this flaw. I also told you some associated behaviors and attitudes that would come with being indecisive. They take a long time to come to a decision. They're as indecisive on frivolous decisions as they are on important ones. They make a choice and they change their mind. They watch others anxiously to see how they react to their decisions. I'm not actually going to read all of them because there's a whole bunch more in there and this will just take forever. Some associated thoughts with this. Associated emotions. <laughs> positive aspects of this trait. The indecisive character does truly care or he wouldn't agonize over every little decision. Most people plagued with this flaw can recognize it as a weakness and would change it if they knew how. Indecisiveness can also make a character more cautious and cause him to do his research before making a decision. From a story standpoint, the indecisive character can be a good source of conflict making small problems worse and creating tension with others through their inability to commit. Negative aspects of this negative trait and overcoming this trait as a major flaw and they go into like major and minor flaws in this book. Um, traits in a supporting character that might cause conflict with your indecisive character. So that's pretty much what this book is. It has a whole, whole lot of different traits in here and there's just as much detail on every single of those traits as there was on just indecisive, which is the first one I flipped to. As far as the associated behaviors and attitude, um, you could actually use a couple of these examples and have scenes that play out showing these different behaviors so that you can show this trait in your character, which I think is really cool and really useful. It's just a really fun and really interesting book and I really recommend it if you like to create a whole bunch of characters. And my final reading recommendation for today is not a book but a magazine subscription. Writer's Digest. I absolutely love this magazine and you may have heard of it so I'm not going to go into it too too much. It is really helpful. Each issue has so many different topics. It is a little on the pricey side for a magazine. It is $24.95 for a one-year subscription and you get eight issues. This is not sponsored by the way. I just absolutely love Writer's Digest and I find it so helpful. I actually found out about this book because there was an excerpt in Writer's Digest and then I read the whole book and it was amazing. So it gives you lots of excerpts from other writing books. It has so many helpful articles on pretty much every aspect of writing you could possibly want. Even when the issue isn't about something that would not be personally what I'm writing, but me personally genre-wise, like they rarely go into young adult. You know, you can apply these to anything. 
and one time they had an issue on memoir writing and that's not my thing at all but it still had interesting tips for writing in general and you can really get a lot out of this magazine. If you're like me and you like reading about writing you probably really enjoy this magazine and if you're not 100% sure about it my I know my library system does have this magazine so you can check your library system see if they have it and that way you could read a couple issues and maybe get a feel for it but if you are serious about writing I would really recommend this because it is amazing. So that is it for today, reading recommendations of books on writing. That is most of the books on writing that I own. I have a couple more books on writing. They're different kinds of thesauruses basically and so I'm going to probably do a video on that in the future and I also let me know if you want to see a video on other writing recommendation books that I have read that I have read from the library because I can always get them out again and talk about them. So let me know below what some of your favorite books on writing are and if you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up. I upload new videos on Mondays and every other Friday plus the occasional surprise video so subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and have fun and stay creative.